And she's coming here to do this. And of course, I mean, society that is okay with cheating and mistresses and jump downs and so on and so forth, right? You know, when it comes to somebody actually being in a relationship, in a loving relationship, uh, hence called a marriage, there are a whole lot of ways somebody can destroy homes other than getting married. Assalamualaikum. Peace. I'm Coach Nadir. Assalamualaikum. Peace. I'm his wife, Coach Fatima. Assalamualaikum. Peace. I am also his wife, Coach Nyla. We're the co-founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships as well as co-authors of Let's Talk Religion Uncensored. Now, today we want to address a myth, a commonly, um, <laughs> commonly stated mm -hmm. myth over and over when it comes to religion. All right. For those of you who don't know, I've been raised coach. Fatima for over 26 years and to coach Nyla now for over 11 years. So yes, we practice polygyny. And polygyny means a man having multiple wives. So with that being said, the main myth is what? <sighs> <laughs> the main myth? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess there are a bunch of the such things as the main. But the myth we're going to address today, it. you know, but the, the one we're going to address today is the one where when a woman decides to marry a married man, Okay, or the married man decides to marry again, that this incoming wife, whether it be a second wife, third wife, fourth wife, subsequent wife, whatever you want to call it, is there as the home record. She's coming to destroy and take over. Right? That's a very common myth. So yeah. What what say we? Say we. What say we? What say me is that <laughs> that that's not necessarily the case. Well, I know in my situation that wasn't necessarily the case. And from a number of sisters who are not only incoming subsequent wives, those are even looking to be subsequent wives. They have a whole other thing of wanting to be married, of wanting to have a relationship, you know, that's loving and caring and nurturing and it's, it's so many other factors. And the factor that I really don't hear is that, yeah, you know, I'm gonna take over. I'm gonna come over there and I'm just just gonna be about me, me and nothing but me. And he gonna divorce her and all. I've heard of that so many times that it was like, they should try to break up my marriage, just this and that and the other. And it's like, did they say that? Are they really trying to do some things like that? Or is it certain things that we may have in our minds and our mentality that say, you know what, I'm used to this, this is who I have. You in here because you're you're here because you pose a threat already because now you're taking away something. You know, and I'm like, I, from a subsequent wife standpoint, that's never crossed my mind until people put it out there that that's the reason why, you know, um, women <laughs> look to marry a married man is because they're hoping some way one day that, you know, it'll just be them. Please. It's too much other stuff to be worried about. And you see something way bigger than just a marriage, you know, and just your marriage. You actually see something much bigger, at least from my standpoint. Anyway. Before you skip this ad, my wife and I have something very important to ask you. And I'm Coach Nadir, by the way. And I'm his wife, Coach Fatima. And I am also his wife, Coach Nyla. Do you desire more vibrancy and emotion in your relationships? Are you okay with just being satisfied or settling? In these trying times, most people have been socially and emotionally distanced and disconnected. People are cringing for change and improvement right now. That's why we decided to create something very special for you. Now, don't worry, it's free and it's our special gift to you. If you want the confidence that comes with a secure, loving relationship, we believe you're gonna love the video series we put together for you. We just need to know where you want us to send it. So click that link down below. We look forward to helping you garner the respect, emotion and love you deserve with your most important relationships. We can't wait to send it to you. So tell us where to send it. <laughs> so make sure you are always practicing and living with GLC. Make sure you are growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connecting on a higher level every, every single, single day. day. As 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 peace. peace. Save. <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> did it. One of the things is that um, a lot of people project their own insecurities. And in doing so, since the word that um, Coach Nile used was threat, or as I say, see something as a threat, then you're projecting your own insecurity. And usually, many times, that comes from uh, a, a couple where the wife is like, you know what, okay, this is coming in again, threat, right? Now, this common idea also, this myth is that, oh, well, she's the new shiny thing. Whether they don't have don't have kids together and stuff like that, right? And somebody may have children or she just knew. So it's newer, honeymoon phase type um, assumptions that go on. So now it's this thing is being projected. She's coming here to do this. And of course, I mean, society that is okay with cheating and mistresses and jump downs and so on and so forth, right? You know, when it comes to somebody actually being in a relationship, in a loving relationship, uh, hence called a marriage, there are a whole lot of ways somebody can destroy homes other than getting married. I mean, it really says something that's a special type of individual, a special type of evil yeah. for somebody to go ahead and plot, have a marriage, have all of this type of stuff and all this energy and hope to destroy something. OK, and bypass all the normal alerts and red flags that come with that. OK, because, of course, the husband will have to be the one to allow that in. All right. So a lot of it, again, is just projecting fear and uh, putting that out there to address a threat. But also taking that blame because you're not going to be like, no, I'm scared or insecure. I'm not really sure. I don't know how this is going to work. So she's obviously the problem. This incoming person is a problem coming as a missile to my marriage when in reality it's establishing an entirely separate individual marriage. All right. For the same reasons, the first marriage likely also got started as well to build a family. I think um, uh, many times that people try to make their crap your crap. <laughs> <laughs> So again, they do try to project things, but I also know that it's so easy to p people for people to say that it's a threat. She's a treat. You're trash, you know, mm -hmm. and they want to adapt that mentality because sometimes when people, when they would do something, they want to throw it on you. So they're the guilty party because that's a thought that's in their mind, even though it's never crossed anyone else's mind. Sometimes people get married so that they can have a family and it doesn't work out or a marriage doesn't work out and they still have the desire to still be a, a, a wife or a husband, a mother, a father. They still have that desire. So it doesn't leave because I just did a quote the other day. Just because another marriage begins doesn't mean yours ends. And once we adapt that mentality, this won't no. have to adapt that, that mentality. This won't be as hard as people make it to be. So when you don't want to see something succeed, you'll think of every way to just make it just garbage. So if it's always polygyny, I don't like her. You know, I gotta figure out if I like her. Just because someone else exists, then it's already, it's already destruction. It's already they got an ulterior motive. Just because they're alive. Just because they're alive. Maybe they're not in polygyny or they just said, I like it. Oh, no, don't like you. Keep, stay away from my husband. You know, it becomes this. They make the, the subsequent wife this virus that they must protect their family from. <laughs> because it's going to be an epidemic if she gets in the family. And it's just like that. The statement is so disrespectful because it, it, it erases the brain cells of the husband. Even if that's something that she wanted to do, like he can't. Look at that, see it, and go, well, we're not doing that because I'm not going nowhere on either side. Hmm. So even if that's her desire, even if it's not an evil desire, maybe she just says, oh, well, she, he can be around all the time. And, all, I, you know, I don't, I've been married 26 years. I'm not saying that anymore because I have big old grown kids and I need to uh, spend a lot of extra time with them. But I was thinking about that. I said, people just... He could just let her just moan right on over him and he just take over the family. And you <laughs> sit down and shut up because I got this. That is what it becomes, you know, because a lot of people through all. We talk about this stuff because a lot of people have thrown these things our way. <laughs> you know, as individuals, we all got uh, accused in some way, shape or form. Like I had cancer. Lord, I was dying. And that must have been why. And, you know, I'm like, so people ask my kids, is your mom sick? <laughs> Uh, she dying, so I gotta pick up another wife, you know, because she's gonna be dead soon. Right. I mean, who always thinks searching like for that? Cancer, trying to search for. I had a brother ask me that. He's like, well, you know, how's your wife and everything? Is everything okay? It's fine. Like, what are you talking about? Now, this is a man. This is a man that chose to find it easier 
to have multiple affairs. They practice polygyny. Asking me, is there a problem? No, nah, bro. Again, we pro morals. So it doesn't matter if you are practicing monogamy or polygyny. We simply are pro morals. But practice polygyny ain't something walk in the park. You know what I'm saying? So that must be understood. Also, when this type of information gets thrown out, there, oh, it's a home trying to do this to me, do this to me. Beware that you're not planting the seeds for your own marriage and destruction and then try to blame polygyny as the problem. Because we've had cases where um, families come together, they, they try to work things out, but now all of a sudden there's this, this um, vengeance and need for revenge, for example. And all of a sudden, now this, this gets put here, now you're backbiting, then there's slander, there's all these other things, and seeds are going, and you're like, oh, well, ever since polygyny, my husband and I were grown apart. When the reality was the one stabbing him for how you felt he stabbed you. So don't be planting the seeds for your own destruction. Now it takes growth. Because it's going to be ugly, just like in a regular marriage. When you first get married, monogamy is just you two. It's going to take growth. You ain't got it all figured out. It's going to be ugly before it looks pretty. Okay? This is just normal life stuff. So don't blame polygyny, polygyny the institution of marriage, for the lack of personal growth. Because we already know simply by numbers that since there are more monogamous marriages, there are more monogamous failures, there are more abuse, all kinds of stuff in monogamy. And again, we simply pro morals because if you have pro morals, you'll be good at monogamy, polygyny, or whatever you choose to practice. So, with that being said, any final thoughts on this whole myth of the incoming wife? The devil, she coming! Well, it's so good that Colin Fatima is in this video. We all do the video together because if I was to do this video, they're like, Coach Fatima needs to talk about it. Well, they would have nailed her to the cross. Coach Fatima needs to talk about it because like, you don't know what you're talking you about. So. <laughs> I'm just but, here like this chair I'm sitting on. It's so <laughs> ridiculous. Somebody asked me an honest question. They said, Fatima, ain't this the worst you ever felt? I said, no, the worst I ever felt in my marriage um, wasn't polygyny. It was up there. But it wasn't the worst. The worst I ever felt was getting married. And two weeks later, my grandpa was dead. And I was getting ready to have my first child. So that's the worst I ever felt. Because when you have two great things that you want to celebrate so wholeheartedly, but then you get hit with the first real sudden death of your life. And my grandpa raised me. So that was like losing my dad. So when my dad died, I, it's like losing the dad twice. So when people go to these extremes and say, oh, ain't that the worst thing? Ain't that the worst you ever felt? No, I buried both my dads. So put things into perspective and stop thinking everything is so diabolical and out to get you, because then you have to really think about if you have a clinical mental illness, if you keep on mowing over this stuff over and over and obsessing over it, you gotta ask yourself a question, who does that serve? Because Coach Nadir was talking about revenge. Revenge just makes the wound deeper, it doesn't heal it. Mm -hmm. And people gotta understand that. And you don't have the privilege to execute revenge on someone that is practicing a lifestyle that is allowed for them to practice. And we have to, especially as Muslims, we better understand it. We better know that because there's punishment attached to it. Indeed. Yeah. Gang, gang. Gang, gang in the comments. All right, so that's it, yeah. At the end of this short video, what you want to put in there? Polly gang, gang. Hashtag Polly gang, gang. We want to know that you watched the entire video because we know that most of the people who watch our videos, are not subscribed, so don't let that be you. One, subscribe, hit the bell, of course. But let us know that you made it to the end and we shout you back out. So put it. Polly Gang Gang. Polly Gang Gang. <laughs> With that being said, we appreciate y'all. Remember, wish change nothing but decision changes everything when we rock out some GLC. Make sure you're growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connecting on a high level every, every single, single day. day. Yay, so yay. Ready. Peace. <laughs> Here are three ways outstanding personal relationships can help you. Make sure you guys are following us on our social medias at Outstanding Personal Relationships on YouTube and Facebook and on IG at Outstanding Relationships and also Clubhouse under our names. And make sure you go to OutstandingPersonalRelationships.com and sign up for our email list. And there you will get updates on our new book, Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored. Absolutely. And... Last but not least, when it comes to coaching or counseling, if you want to work with us one-on-one -on, -one or in group settings, make sure you're on that website and reach out to us because we do have very limited spots and we like usually have a wait list. So with that being said, GLC. Peace.
Make sure you are growing intentionally. Loving fearlessly. And connecting on a higher level every, every single, single day. day. Stone Lake. Peace. Peace.